life sciences to another exciting life science lesson. We are on the road to biochemistry, the molecules of life. So we're looking at all the things that we need for us to build a healthy working right cell and ultimately a healthy working individual if it's a plant, if it's an animal. So that's what we're looking at, the chemistry of life, bio, right, biochemistry or molecules of life. We have followed a few um, weeks. There's a few lessons that you might have watched um, before this, and we're looking at the concept of organic compounds, right? So if I'm going to turn to our little mind map behind me here, you will see the road that we have followed. We looked at the concept of, right, what is an inorganic compound. We said a smaller, doesn't have carbon, and we're now looking at this concept of what organic compounds are. Right? Organic compounds are really big, right? There's a lot of carbon in them. They are, as I said, they're large macromolecules. And the lessons before that we looked at, we've looked at carbohydrates. Okay? And today we're going to look at proteins and their very, very, very close cousins, if I could call it that. We're going to look at enzymes. So that's the work that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at what is a protein, right? And what is an enzyme and how they're going to relate to each other. Okay, guys, behind me, you will see um, there are a few key words. I'm not going to go through each of the words now as we usually do. I'm going to, they're words that are going to appear right when we do our lesson. So they're going to be in bold, they're going to be highlighted, or I'm going to make a point of explaining them to you. So when you go over your notes, please make sure that the key words, you know their definitions. Life science is a different language. You need to be able to speak scientifically. So when, you need, when you've got words, you need to be able to use those words correctly and where do they fit into which process we are talking about. And the words that we're going to look at today, some of them you might seem familiar, monomer, polymer, but we're going to look at words specifically right related to the topic for the first part of proteins. Now just to recap again, remember, what are we looking at? We're looking at organic molecules, right? We're going to take the path. We're going to do carbohydrates, which we have done. Today, we're going to look at proteins and enzymes. And in lessons to follow, you guys are going to see we're going to look at lipids, which are fats. We're going to look at vitamins, right? And those are the things which we are going to look at as far as organic compounds are concerned. Okay, guys, now we're going to start with proteins. Now, when we look at proteins, it's very, very important, all right, that you are able to recognize the structure. Now, I want you to have a look at something. When we did carbohydrates, carbohydrates also were made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I don't know if you can remember when we did glucose, when we did starch, all of those were our carbohydrates. And when we looked at the picture, you kind of had like a, Right, it looks almost like a bit of a triangle, like a hexagon, and we saw all carbon, hydrogen, and oxygens in that. Now, when we come to proteins, proteins are a really, really special group. And the reason is, is because proteins have nitrogen in it. Now, remember I said to you, you don't need to learn the structure, but you do need to be able to recognize it. Now, when we do carbohydrates, when we do fats, when we do proteins, the only organic compound that has nitrogen right, is going to be proteins. Proteins are the only one that has nitrogen. So if you get a diagram that looks like this, there's my carbon, there, there we go, there's my hydrogen over there, and there's my oxygen. But definitely, we're going to find nitrogen. Now, if you remember, what are you going to link nitrogen to? Can you remember your minerals? All right, what did we need nitrogen for? Right, to build proteins, to build DNA, muscles, etc. Now, these two things here, over here, sometimes, all right, sometimes proteins can also have, right, sulfur, phosphorus, or iron. And once again, what were those part of? The minerals. 
right in the beginning when we looked at um, inorganic, we looked at the minerals. We looked at some, um, don't necessarily sulfur, but we looked at phosphorus. We looked at why nitrogen was so important in the diet, right? We looked why iron was so important in our diet, right? So that is why if nitrogen, if we have something that has nitrogen in, we are getting proteins in, right? And that is going to be your meats and your chickens and your beans and your peas, right? And your eggs and your, some of your dairy products like your milk, right? Those are all going to be your protein products that we are going to look at. Okay, guys, remember this, very, this term. I'm going to explain it again. Very important. When we look at our organic compounds, they are made up of a single monomer, or sometimes we use the word building block. Remember I say, said to you last time, if we build a house, we use a brick, right? One brick and we build a house. When we add a whole lot of those together, right? Mono is one. When we add a whole lot of them together, that is the word polymer. We have got something that is many and also something that is big. So this tends to be the smaller parts, all right? And when we build them up, we are going to make something that is many parts to it, and it's going to be so much bigger. Now, when we look at a protein, the building blocks, right? The single things of a building block, that is called an amino acid. Now, if we can recap carbohydrates, remember their building block was a monosaccharide, one sweet, right, or one sugar, if we have to take it. Here, proteins, all right, their building blocks is one single amino acid. And if I take the amino acids, I need 50 of them, right? I need 50 of them, and I put them together they're going to make a protein. So the amino acid is my monomer, and the long chain that I'm going to make, that is going to be my protein. Now, guys, this is quite an interesting concept. When you are going to carry on and you're going to do things in maybe a couple of years, you're going to look at all these ways in which we make proteins. There are different types. There are 20 different types of amino acids which means if we put them in a specific or, um, order, we're going to make different types, okay, types of proteins. Right. And what are, what are proteins in my body? I don't know if you've ever thought about when you breathe in and the oxygen goes into your mouth, and it goes into your lungs, right? And we need to get that oxygen everywhere in your body. How does it travel? Where does it go? In your red blood cells, you've got a, right, a protein, right, an iron pigment called hemoglobin. And that hemoglobin is a taxi for oxygen. Imagine if I didn't make hemoglobin. What happens if I couldn't make that protein? If I've got no transport, no taxi to pick up oxygen, how am I going to get oxygen to all my cells? If I can't get oxygen to all my cells, my cells die, right? So I need to make this really important protein, right? It's called, right? It's called hemoglobin. Um, maybe some of you have a sugar problem. It's called a diabetic, right? Where your body doesn't make a hormone called insulin, and that's a protein. And because you don't do it, you might have to inject with insulin because if, it, if you don't get it, you could get really sick and ultimately you could die from it, right? So you need to understand that the body's making proteins, those proteins that the body makes from these amino acids are so important. I call them life-giving proteins. That's what I call them, that we all make them, we all need to make them because they're going to keep us alive. Okay, guys, as I've said to you before, this is an important diagram for you to be able, all right, to understand. Now, what this is, this is an amino acid, right? The same way as when I drew, drew that, that was a monosaccharide. This is one 
right, aminos, amino acid. So we're going to need to make chains of it, okay? So if I make a chain, have a look here, this is an amino acid, all right, and this is amino acid, and that is amino acid, they can't just float away and do their own thing. Do you see what we have here? What have we got? We've got a chain. We've got a chain. And it's so nice, the proteins actually rhyme. It's really, really cool. Proteins are joined together by a peptide bond. Check how the P's just roll off your tongue. And this, all right, is a peptide bond. So if I've got 50 of these, all right, I've got 50 or more of these amino acids, I then say that I have made a protein. I have made a protein. Have a look here, guys. You see, here is one amino acid. I don't need to know the structure. I know it's amino acid because there's a nitrogen. Here's another amino acid. There we go. And we put them together, and their bond is called a peptide bond. Right? Very important. Proteins, peptide bond. Okay, so guys, when you think of a protein, I want you to have a look, right, I'm going to quickly turn around and show you the picture here. A protein is a really, really, really complex, all right? It's a complex, I want to show you this diagram over here, I'm going to come back quickly, all right? It's a really complex structure. Protein is, it's like twisted, it's got a 3D shape, it's wrapped around each other, but it's shape, although it's all DMCA, it's all different. It's like all these weird shapes, okay? The shape of it is going to be very, very important. So do you understand? It's a really big, nice, simple. We join the chains together, and then it kind of like rotates. It's got all these weird right, ways that it folds until it eventually has this really convoluted, twisted shape. Okay, so let's go back. There we go. All right. So guys, very, very important part, the next one over here. Why must you have proteins? Why is it important that you have proteins in the diet? And if you go back to the, the segment on, right, when we did minerals, we saw that there was this deficiency called quashia core, right, with the, the children with the extended stomach, and they were very thin, they didn't have muscles, right, because they weren't getting enough of protein. So what why do we need proteins? Let's have a look. This is going to be a very important part. This is essential. We're going to look at this afterwards. All enzymes are proteins. And guys, what are enzymes for? They make things work, right? That is what a, a cellular activity is. It's making, all right, things work. I know I've spelt it wrong, all right, in our body. Okay, right, what else does it do? Guys, very important again. It's, I can't tell you, it's the proteins are really important. It's the building blocks of a lot of the things. When we're going to look later, when we look at the cell, right, the cell membrane, the basis of all life has got proteins in it. Okay, as I told you before, hemoglobin, we need it, we need this protein to carry oxygen. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to carry oxygen. At the moment, right, when we're talking about COVID, if things in our country, a lot of talk in the past while, right, has all, all been about COVID. How do we fight COVID, right? We need to build antibodies, okay? And those are proteins. That's how we fight disease. Antibodies, and they are proteins. Muscle, right? How do you get that big, nice, big muscles? What do you think it is? You need to have proteins in your diet. Okay, and also very important, as I said to you, it's a really important part of your diet to do all of these things. Okay, so when we look to carbohydrates, carbohydrates were generally our energy. They gave us energy. Proteins are our builders. It's our hair, our nails, our skin, right? As I said, our muscles, all of those, right, are very important when we need, we need proteins with the nitrogen to make them. And as I said to you before, the shape is so, so, so important because what happens is, 
is that if we change the shape of a protein, and that's the word that's very important here, right? If we change the shape of a protein, it's said to be denatured. Right, now what is going to happen is, I want you to check over here, high temperatures and pH, right, are going to change the shape of the protein. Okay, so this is the shape. If I have very high temperatures or I have a pH that's weird, right, it's going to change the shape of my, right, of my protein. What do I mean by that? Okay, I want you to imagine a scenario. I want you to take an egg, I want you to crack it, and I want you to cook it, all right? Then when you finish cooking it, I want you to put it back in the egg, in the shell, exactly how it was. Why can't you do it? What is it? You've cooked it. What is it? What color? It's changed color. It's changed shape, all right? You've totally changed what it has to do. And what is cooking? All right, temperature, all right, temperature. pH, what is pH? pH is acid and all right, bases. If something is an, is an acid or an alkaline, that is what it is, a pH. So imagine, all right, if I eat something in my stomach, what does the hydrochloric acid do? It's going to change the shape of the protein, which is good because I want to digest it. Okay, guys, now we have to test for proteins. We have to do our food test. And guess what? The letter P continues, right? We are going to... Right, have a look here. Well, guess what color it is? Yes, it is purple. All right, a positive test is going to be purple. So I'm going to go to this one. So what you do is you're going to put your food in there and you're going to add the universal agent called a biuret. And guess what color the biuret is? Biuret is blue, all right? Blue, like this. As soon as I add something, that has got any kind of protein in, guess what a positive reaction is? Purple, right? So anytime you add biuret to something that is protein, it's going to change to purple. Okay, guys, that's all for now. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. <music> Welcome back, Life Sciences. I hope you had a nice little stretch, right? Had some water, right? Did some activity just to get the blood flowing. Remember now, we are looking at organic molecules, and today we're focusing on the major group proteins. Okay, proteins, big builders in our body, our muscles, our hair, our nails, right? Hemoglobin in our blood. So, very, very important part of that. And when we finished after the break, before the break, should I say, we were looking at this concept of what proteins were really important for. And we looked at this concept called an enzyme. Now, enzymes are proteins. So what does that mean? They've got this huge, big, particular shape. And what is an enzyme? That we're going to look at. So you've got to keep in the back of your mind, right, that it is a protein. So all the characteristics of proteins are also going to be the characteristics that we're going to look at when we look at enzymes. Okay, so guys, what is an enzyme? Now, the words on the board that we're going to discuss as we go on, you'll see, as I said, right, we're not going to discuss them now, but we're very much going to look at them as we keep on discussing what the enzymes are. So I'll probably circle them for you or I'll highlight for them, you, um, them for you. Please remember, go over them. You must know what they mean. You must know the terminology. You must be able to understand these concepts. All right, what is, what is an enzyme? Okay, guys, I'm going to use your body. Let's use your body as an example. Okay, so what happens is your body needs to work, right? So things need to happen in your body. And enzymes are those things that make things work. When we talk about this concept of a chemical reaction, what are we talking about? Things getting done in your body. Let me give you a simple example. So tonight, let's say, or today, you're going to have a piece of bread, all right, with butter on. I take the piece of bread, it's a carbohydrate. 
it's really a big molecule. I take a bite, right, and I start to chew it in my mouth. Now, while I start to chew it, there's an enzyme, right, in my saliva, in my spit, there's an enzyme. And what it does is it takes the bread and it starts to break it up, all right, into smaller pieces. Because remember, it's a polymer, it's big. And when I do, when I digest something, I need to break it down to its really, really smallest part, the monomer. So what have I done here? So I've started the process of breaking down the bread in my mouth. So I'm speeding things up. I'm making things work. Now, what happens if I didn't have that enzyme in my mouth, right? How long would it take for me to break all, the things and things that, all these things down, okay? So what we're saying is, is that enzymes are biological catalysts. What do we mean by that? They are organic compounds that speed up a reaction. If we didn't have them, things would take so long to happen in our body, all right? So what they do is they the go-to guys. They go in, they do all the work, and things can happen in our body. That is exactly what an enzyme does. It makes it, things happen fast, it ha makes things happen, right? That's what we need to do. Because if they didn't, oh, we'd be on like a go slow all of the time, and that's definitely not what we want. Okay, guys, when we look at how an enzyme works, all right, we're going to look at this concept called a lock and a key. And it's exactly how you might be picturing it in your head. If I've got a key, right, it's going to fit into a particular lock. Why? Because my key is a particular shape and my lock is a particular shape. So if I have a different key, each shape is not going to fit, right, into the lock. If it doesn't fit, I can't open it, I can't close. It's not going to work. And that's exactly how the enzymes are going to work. Let's take a, take a peek at a diagram and we're going to show you. Okay, guys, so here what we've got is, right, the blue over here, right, this is my enzyme. Now, as I say to you, it's a very particular shape. Now, have a look at the blue the whole way through. It's not going to change. Now, what does substrate mean? Substrate means something that the enzyme works on. Right, the substrate. So what we're talking about here, so if I was talking about my, when I, when I ate my sandwich, what would the substrate have been? It would have been the bread, right? And here would have been my, the enzyme in my mouth. Now have a look here. Look at the shape. The shape of the substrate is going to fit directly into the shape, right, of my enzyme. What do I have? Lock and key. There we go. They fit together like a lock and a key. So here I've got something that I'm going to work on. I need to change. That's my substrate. The enzyme joins to it, and it's called the enzyme-substrate complex. Quite easy, because what is this? This is my enzyme. This is my substrate. All oh, the blue doesn't go there. All right. Enzyme-substrate complex. And what this enzyme does, it now does the work. And what is the work? It changes the substrate. Here it was big. What have I done now? I've made it into smaller parts. All right, so that's the concept that we're looking at. Shape. Shape, 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 shape. Really important. The shape of the enzyme needs to fit with the shape of what it's working on. All right, they fit together like a lock and key. The enzyme speeds up, it does the work. And when it comes apart, I have changed the substrate. I might have made something bigger or I've made something smaller. I've broken it apart, right? I can do both of those reactions. So guys, when we look at what an enzyme is, right, very important, go, but if I'm going to go back to that diagram just now, I'll show you. Let's have a look here at the next one. Let's look here, all right? 
This is my substrate. This is my enzyme. Look at my enzyme here and here. It doesn't change shape. So if that means, very simply, they are not used up. I don't use an enzyme. I don't have an enzyme, breaks up, all right, and then I've got to make it all over again. Here it comes. I don't need to buy a new key every time I want to open up the lock. I use the same key. I put it in. I open up or I close it, and I take it out. And then I come home, and then I put it in the front door again. Same key. I don't say, oh, there's my key. Let me throw away. Let me go to the shop and then buy a new one. All right, that's not the concept. We keep on using the same enzyme over and over and over. Same thing here. They're not altered. We don't change their shape. Have a look here. White, look what it looks like. Happy face, happy face. At no stage are we changing the shape of the enzyme. It must stay constant. That's a very important concept. Shape stays the same. Shape stays. Okay, remember that. Shape must stay. Right, the next one. Guys, anabolic means to build up. So what does that mean? I don't know if you've seen those guys, they take anabolic steroids. They get all these big muscles and that, right? What are they building? They're building up all these muscles. Okay, that's anabolic. So if I make something bigger, uh, amino acid into a big protein, that's anabolic. What is catabolic? Catastrophe. Oh, it was a catastrophe. That means something happened, it broke, right? So what is a catabolic process when I break something down, all right? So now I've got my big protein, my piece of bread, I put it in my mouth, and what do I start doing? The enzyme makes it into smaller pieces. So anabolic, make big. Catabolic, we make it into smaller pieces. All right, so guys, as I said here, really, really important that it stays the same and that it keeps its shape. Okay, while well you're asking me, what on earth is that? All right, I'm trying to illustrate to you that even though it looks like a tangled web, it's a shape. And that shape must stay the same. Okay, and that is now important because if we change certain aspects, we're going to change the shape. And if we change the shape, we can't work, right? If I change the shape of my key, it's not going to fit into the lock. And it's not going to open, it's not going to close. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do, right? So it's really important at all times that the enzymes always retain their shape. Now, we're looking at the properties, right, of what what can happen when we change things with proteins and with enzymes because they're one of the same? All enzymes are proteins. Not all proteins are enzymes, but all enzymes are proteins. And we, we touched on this right in the segment earlier. Okay, very important, guys. Proteins or, and enzymes are temperature specific. Right, what does that mean? They work best... at a specific temperature, at a certain temperature. Okay, now this graph, NB, 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 you're going to see when we do our questions as well. Right, when we look at right, how temperature affects enzymes, we often use a graph to show all right, how it's going to work. Okay, so because we choose temperature, we put it on the x-axis. And over here, all right, what does reaction velocity mean? In very simple, it means how is it working? <laughs> right, how is it working? Is it working slow? Is it working fast? Is it working? Is it not working? Right, so we're looking at basically that's big words for saying what exactly is happening to the enzyme. Okay, so guys, over here. When we look at these are very three important terms that you need to know. Now, I'm going to go with this one. All right, this one. We look at the very top of our graph, and we draw a line down. 
and we read a temperature. Now I'm going to say to you, this is a graph of your human body. All right, and I'm going to say that this temperature is 36.6 degrees. If you are going through COVID, if you've been through COVID, right, wherever you go, what are they taking? Your temperature, right? What are they looking for? A normal body temperature. So why am I stressing this body temperature? I am saying to you that all the enzymes in your body, why is your body 36.6 degrees? Very simply, because all your enzymes work best at 36.6 degrees. And the word we use is optimum. Optimum. Optimum, exactly where we want it to work, right? So enzymes at the top, all right, of our graph, optimum best. That is where the temperature, all right, the temperature, the best temperature for that particular organism. And we're using us, other organisms might be different, but for us, 36.6, right, is a good. And that is why if we have a very high temperature or a very, very low one, things start, start to not work. And what happens? Right, serious things could happen to our body. So we want to keep it at that. Okay, now obviously that is not always going to work. This over here, when temperatures are colder, all right, they're colder. Because you see, this is 36. What happens is they, it says increasing activity, but we use the word inactive. They're kind of like hibernating. They're sleeping. And you guys probably do it as well. When you're cold, I don't think you're very active. So it's really cold in the morning. What are you doing? You're snuggling up, all right? You're inactive. You're not doing anything, all right? So that's exactly what happens here. You, you're fine, but you're like, oh, you're a little bit lazy. You kind of like working. You kind of like not. So we use the word inactive. Then, okay, let's think about my egg cooking. What happens when the temperature goes too high? What does denature mean? To change shape. And what do we never want to do? We never want to change the shape. Guys, when it's cold, it's still working, even though it's really, really slow. Once we change the shape, right, no lock and key. No lock and key, right, no work. It's not going to work. It's not working. That shape, as I said, is so important. High temperatures denature, and it changes the shape. Right, so proteins and enzymes are very sensitive to temperature. That's their first property. Their second property is they're very sensitive to pH. I don't know if you've ever taken, you can try this at home, um, if you take some, maybe some uh, milk and you take some lemon juice and you put it together, all of a sudden there's like little lumps all over the show. Because what have you done to the milk? You've kind of like, oh, you've changed the shape and all these things. All right. So what happens here? And I want you to use this diagram to explain. I want you to think of your body again. Here's a graph. You don't need to worry about these names. But I want you to notice that this enzyme is in your stomach. Okay. This enzyme is in your intestine. Or I could have even said mouth. All right, so now, guys, what I'm trying to say is when I eat, now I want you to think, eat a protein, maybe you have a piece of meat or some soya or something, goes into your stomach, right, and we need to digest it. Now, these enzymes in there, the enzymes in your stomach, they need to work. Remember, we need digestion. We need to get those things going, right? But the, the enzymes are saying, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Why can't I do anything? Ah, you know why? Because I need to work when it's acid. So that's what my stomach does. My stomach secretes hydrochloric acid, all right? And it makes my stomach acidic. It makes it acidic. And the enzymes say, yes, 
It's acid. I can work. And it works in the stomach. All right? And it does what it needs. Why? Because the pH is correct for that stomach. Now the food goes out of your stomach and it goes into your intestine. And it's acid, acid, acid. And your intestine goes, what? No, I can't work like this. It's too acidic, right? So you know what you do? Your liver takes this thing called bile. It's like green stuff. It's really gross, right? And it squirts it all over and it makes it alkaline. It takes the acid away. If you ever had heartburn and you have maybe a Rennie's tablet or some milk to get it, that's what it is. So what happens is the acid changes, all right, to a more alkaline. And what does the enzyme in the stomach say, in the intestine say? Thank you. Now I can work because it is the right pH. And you're going to learn later, especially when you breathe in the oxygen and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide can change the pH of your blood. So you need to have certain things going on in your body right, that gets those levels right. Because remember, what was in your blood? Hemoglobin. Right, so we've got to keep, it's a balance. We've got to keep our body balanced. Homeostasis, right, keeping it right all together there. Okay, guys, and the last property is this concept of being substrate specific. Remember, this is what an enzyme works on. Right, and so it must be a particular shape. So if you have a look here, an enzyme has got a particular shape, and the substrate has got a particular shape, so they lock together. I can't just mix and match any shapes together. So an enzyme will go with its partner. Right, so for example, in your mouth, salivary amylase will only work on starch. Right, for example, those kind of things. It can't just work on anything that... Right? If you put proteins or fat in your mouth, it's not going to do anything. So that is what substrate specific is. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. Right, just a quick recap. We're looking at proteins today. Right, and we're looking at enzymes and we're looking at why it's really important that we have them in our diet and especially how enzymes are going to work. Those, those biological catalysts, they get things ready right, and going in our bodies. We're now going to look at a few possible questions that we could ask on this section. Let's see if we can right, master through them. Okay, guys, the first one is just going to be, what I'm going to put, is going to be a um, multiple choice question. It's just a, let's get us into the groove of this proteins. The giant organic molecules, right, really telling us they're nice and big, containing the elements C, H, O, and N. As soon as you see that N, right, your brain must be going, okay, I know what this is. And sometimes sulfur, Right, whose function is to repair worn out tissues. Right, now have a look here. This is going to be the very key phrase. Number A is amino acids. And I think a lot of you might say yes here. But amino acids are the building blocks. So they are small. So you might think, oh yes, amino acids does have nitrogen but they said here the giant organic molecule. So that is going to be a no. Number B is proteins, right? What do we know about proteins? They're made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and they are really big, so that is a definite possibility. Carbohydrates and lipids both only consist of car carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so they are not going to be part of the equation so the answer is going to be number B. Okay, another multiple choice question, but just giving you a diagram. As soon as you see the diagram, I'm hoping that you can start to think lock and key, lock and key enzymes. Right, the diagram below shows enzyme action. There we've got, and we've got a whole lot of letters that go with that. And the question is, 
what is Q, right? Which part is Q? Now, number A says it's an enzyme. Now, if we have a look, an enzyme doesn't change shape. And if we have a look at Q, it changes shape. So, no, it's not going to be A. Number B says it's the enzyme substrate complex. So, it's where's the enzyme? Here. Where's the substrate? Here. So, it's going to be R. That is definitely not Q. So, number B is not going to be my answer. Right, number C is the product. That's the end result. The end result is here. That is going to be number T. Is it number Q? No, it's not, which leads me right to the last answer, which is going to number D. Is it the substrate? Definitely. Right, here's my enzyme. Here's my substrate. My enzyme's going to work on my substrate, so my answer is going to be number D. Okay, our next question right, is going to be a little bit of a longer question. An investigation was carried out to determine. All right. As soon as I see the words to determine, what must my brain tell me? This is my aim. This is the aim of my experiment. To determine the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. So I need to see, does temperature affect how an enzyme works or not? Okay. The next thing is, the results of the investigation are in this graph. Ah, so this is the graph that is going to, after I did my investigation, here's all the different temperatures on the x-axis, here's how the enzyme worked on the y, and now I'm going to see what happened. Did temperature have an effect right, on the workings of my enzyme? Okay, the first question, what was the aim of the investigation? We are now going to go two slides back. You go back to what the heading was, what I did here, and what do you do? You take this out and you write it exactly like this as your answer. As soon as you see the word to determine, that means we always use it to determine what are we going to do. This is your aim. So you take it as if you were going to write like English, you're going to paraphrase, you're going to quote, and you take that and you take it and take it out of your, right, of your, um, of your introduction. Okay, scientific, here we need to go. What is the dependent variable? Dependent variable, right, is the results. And where do we put the results? always on the y-axis. Okay, so what is the dependent variable? It's enzyme acti activity, the percentage. In other words, how does the enzyme work? All right, the activity. Is it working or isn't it working? That is my dependent variable. On my y, on my x-axis over here, Right, is always my independent. What does I start with? I decided. What did I choose? I chose the temperature. So my independent variable is temperature and degrees Celsius. Okay, guys, when I'm planning something, what am I going to do? Right, I'm going to plan an experiment. What must I have? It says here. What is the things I need in the investigation? Our time is running out, I'm afraid. It's actually over. So I'm not going to be able to answer this question, but you guys are now going to think about it. Right, I want you to go now. I want you to think, I'm going to do investigation. What must I have in place? Right, obviously a thermometer, maybe some kind of different temperatures, all those things. Okay, that's all for us from today. Have a wonderful day, Life Sciences. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.